Hi, I'm John Fakara. Welcome to Fakara Classic. I'm here with the irreplaceable mechanic Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. There we go. All right. Today we're giving you an update on all the cars here at Wingnut Manor with the triumvirate of Porsches I have behind me, the 914.6, this thing, and the 928. Then we'll be going outside and giving you an update on the ambulance. So it's a potpourri, a virtual cornucopia of automotive updates for you today here at Wingnut Manor. Let's get started. Let's start with the Porsche 914.6. Now, this car is pretty much ready to race. There were only a couple of small projects to do to get it finished. And one of them was the seat and the seat belts. So we got a new seat for this. The old seat was rubbish. We got new belts for it. The old belts were even worse. Now, we didn't go for a full containment seat because we couldn't fit it in this tiny little car. So we got a nice Sparco Evo seat. They're great seats. It fits the driver nice and snug. A seat should be very snug, just the way you fit a racing helmet. Should be snug, it's gonna be safe. So that fits him really well. The belts were a little bit of a challenge because the original belt set were kind of bolted into the floor the way they did back in the 70s. They're just a little bolt, and a little washer, and they, I guess they just prayed at that point. But what you wanna do is have a largest surface area as possible for those belts to pull up against. So a big washer or a plate underneath the car for those anti-submarine belts in the front. The waist belts, we bolted to the original factory locations, and that's obviously safe because those go straight into the unibody. The shoulder belts were the real tricky bit because these original shoulder belts were just bolted to the rear firewall here, just inch and a quarter washers on the back, and that was it. Now, if you've ever seen one of those great crash test videos where you see the dummies going forward, you can see the amount of inertia that the bodies have going forward. That's the reason we have airbags in steering wheels. That kind of pressure, your, your 150 pound body is now moving forward, now weighs 2,000 pounds under speed. So it would just pull those seat belts right through that firewall, right through that sheet metal. So the correct thing to do is to put a bar that they can strap to. Now, what we did is we copied the crossbar here, the same shape, we just made another one up here, and it goes behind the seat, and the belts, the shoulder belts, just strap directly to it. That way, in an accident, all that force is put through the roll cage, you're going nowhere. Now, these are FIA belts, and they're all six-point belts. So you have two for the shoulders, two points up here, then two for the waist belts, and then you have two points at the front for the anti-submarine belts. SFI belts can come at six or five points. Um, and that's just the difference in how they bolt the front submarine belt down. Now when you buy belts, you want them to be as new as possible out of the box. Because sometimes you'll see them on sale, what they're doing is they're selling year or two year old seat belts. Seat belts have a lifespan. They all have a little tag on them, either when they were made or when they expire. FIA belts, I think, last five years. I think SFI belts are three or two years. So it's worth to open that box up or don't buy the cheap belts on sale or go to Summit or wherever and ask them to pull them off the shelf and look at the date codes because you might get a whole year newer belt that way, which will save you money in the long run because a good set of belts isn't $9.95. They're four or 500 bucks. And that's not a place you want to skimp is in the seat belts and in the seat and in your safety. So spend the money there and also in your helmet. So spend the money on your safety. That's what's most important. Always is the safety of the driver. So we've got Tom nice and safely tucked in to his 914.6. Hopefully he'll be racing it soon. Not too soon because he's too busy putting the Porsche Works reunion together for you guys at Monterey week. But I'm hoping out in September, maybe we can get him out in the car and do some test days and show you what this car can do because I can't wait to put some cameras in here and have you along for the ride as we take this around the track for the first time in six, seven years or whatever it's been. All right, now let's move on to the other car in the garage, which you're probably wondering about. And that is this Porsche. Now this, <laughs> this is a little newer than the Porsches we normally work on. This is a 2007 Porsche 911 Turbo or in Porsche speak, a 997.1. And this is the first generation, that's what it means, the first generation of 997s. Now this is what makes it different than the cars we usually work on, is it's a water-cooled 911. 
all 9-11s were air-cooled for decades and then the revolution came in 1997 when the 996 was released with a water-cooled motor. Now this is the generation after the 996 where they fixed a few things, still base, it's a it's an evolution of the 996, but most importantly, it doesn't have the headlights that everybody seems to hate about the 996. But they're really amazing cars, they're technological just marvels. Uh, this is the first one that we've ever worked on, so we're taking our time. Now what, why do we have it apart? Why is the engine out? Well, come here and take a look. As I said, these cars are water-cooled, and that means now you've got to deal with coolant, and coolant lines and coolant hoses. So that's why the engine is out. You can see the difference in one of these motors <laughs> compared to one of the old 911 engines. The air-cooled heads are gone. The beautiful fan at the front that blew the air inside, that's all gone. What we got now is much more conventional looking. It's still a six cylinder, still horizontally opposed six. So they haven't gotten away from the original engine design, but these have water jackets in them, the heads. So water is what cools the engine, along with a ton of oil. The earlier cars technically really are oil cooled, but there's a, still a mess of oil moving through this. There's still dry sump, and they are a lot more complex because of all the modern technology. So we've got emissions, we've got sound emissions they've got to worry about. There's all kinds of things. So we got lots of stuff going on here. Plus, this is the turbo, which means we've got twin turbos on both sides there. And uh, we, we're doing is we're going through the whole car and we're replacing the coolant lines. And it's, again, not something that we normally do, but this is for a friend, so we're taking care of it. What had happened was he was parking his car and he saw a little dribble of coolant underneath every time he parked it, and we couldn't find where the leak was. Well, the leak, with a bit of inspection, was deep down inside here underneath the intake of course there's a hose down there you can't get to the only way to do it is to drop the engine now thankfully porsche still thinks it's important to drop the motor out of the car and it makes it relatively simple to get them out so a 911 engine going way back you take the transmission engine out there's a few bolts you you know take off the fuel line and some electrics you just drop the whole thing onto a cart you work on it and you put it back in again. Same thing for these. Obviously a lot more things to disconnect, but <laughs> we followed the manual and we got this far. So what's going to happen now is we're going to not only change all the coolant lines, but we're going to change a few things like the camshaft position sensors, things that degrade over time that you'd have to drop the engine or it's easier to get to with the engine out as far as servicing it. So we'll be doing a bunch of other little things. We're going to do the water pump. Uh, but in order to do that, we gotta take all this stuff off. The intake, turbos, everything's gotta move. It's gonna be quite involved. We'll do another video when you can see this thing in pieces. It should be pretty interesting. And it's gonna be interesting for us, right, Matt? Yes. Yes, yes. Matt's really enjoying this process, aren't you, Matt? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we are learning, and that is the most important thing in life is that every day you should learn something new. We are learning about water-cooled Porsches. Something that is not advanced on this, I just want to show you, is the clutch. We're also going to be doing the clutch. This car has 50,000 miles on it. The coolant service is usually around 60, so we're just doing it a little early because of the leak. And the clutches last about the same length, so we split the transmission off and took a look at the clutch. Now, this clutch is pretty much the same kind of clutch you would have had on a car 100 years ago. Clutch technology really hasn't changed for manual transmission. The new you know, twin clutch PDK stuff, flappy paddle nonsense. Yeah, that's super fancy and, and you know, technologically advanced. But this is still, you put your foot in the pedal and it releases the clutch plate and you, put, and you take the foot pedal out and it slams it back against the flywheel. Now you can see the flywheel here looks pretty checked. There's a lot of hot spots on it. It's not in the greatest shape. It doesn't have any scoring on it, but it's not in fantastic shape. The clutch plate itself, not a lot of wear, but it's been through the ringer. Um, you can see the pressure plate here, which is the other plate it forces itself against. That has got a lot of hot spots. That actually has some scoring in it. Um, the other side of the clutch plate is a little worn. Somebody's been doing some, you know, race car starts in their turbo. I'm not saying the current owner has, previous owner maybe, uh, but 
just because the clutch is out, we have it all done, I think we're gonna replace the clutch as well. We have that on order. And we're not going for any stage one, stage two. This is a relatively stock car. And uh, there's no reason to upgrade the clutch because we're not upgrading the power. And the clutch feel on these is actually just buttery smooth. And so why should we torture the owner with a heavier clutch if we're not going for over the horsepower it has? Now these engines have 473 horsepower from the factory. It's a, you know, a little bit of tweaking with the boost and stuff. You can get five, 600 horsepower out of these things, but we don't see the need for it in this particular car. It's a nice street car. The owner loves driving it as it is. We're gonna leave it as it is. Now, the transmission, I just want you to look at it real quick. I wish I had um, a 901 or a 915 earlier transmission to put next to it, because this thing is a beast of a transmission. And you can see how they've upgraded and made it larger just to handle the kind of horsepower the car puts out. And I also think it's like 450 something foot pounds of torque come out of this thing. So these transmissions are beefy and they're much larger, but I just, I, I don't know, that's just the geek in me. I just like looking, <laughs> looking at, you know, and comparing older stuff to newer stuff and seeing how it advances. Uh, it's a really impressive system. It's also the turbos, all the turbos are all wheel drive. So this is an all wheel drive system. So it actually has a front differential as well and the front drives. So that power is spread out amongst four wheels. It's really a marvelous car. I can always recommend buying a Porsche turbo manual transmission as an investment. And I don't care what generation you're talking about. They are fantastic cars. They never make a lot of them. They drive beautifully. You can usually find them with low mileage. And if a 996 or a 997, these are gonna be the last of the, you know, manual, old school clutch stick shift transmission Porsche 911s. You know, they might keep the PDK nonsense for, you know, the, the time until they turn electric, although Porsche swears the 911 will be the last car they ever make electric. But as far as sitting there and rowing through the gears, a rogue, you know, a nice manual transmission 911 turbo, fantastic, worth the money. And I think 996s are completely undervalued right now. And the 997s, but a 996 turbo or step up into the, the GT cars, even better. So we'll follow along with this. We'll follow along with Matt's learning process as we go through and take things off this really complex motor. All right. Now the final car in the garage is our good old 928. Now, we haven't done a ton of this since the last video because we've been working on other projects, but it's on the ground. All the Devic parts are on the car. Everything is together. The drive line's together. The exhaust is on. Everything, this thing's ready to start. And I'm gonna start it for you in a few minutes. And that's gonna be exciting because this car hasn't really run in what, Matt? Like three years? Okay, how long did I have it? I've had it a while. It's a long time. A long time, and it's been pushed around. Yeah. So it's gonna turn from the lump in the driveway under the cover into a functioning car pretty soon. So we went through the whole system, we made through everything work, but there were a couple of little vanity things I wanted Matt to do to it uh, when he had some downtime, and, and they're back here. I, I, I showed you in the last video, it had marker lights in the back that were put on for the DOT when this was brought into the United States. This is a European model, didn't have lights back here they added these horrible little marker lights well they had left holes behind so we did is we filled in the holes we made little metal patches welded them in and smoothed it out matt did a beautiful job on this now these fenders are steel so that was relatively easy to work on the door skins and the front fenders they're aluminum so they're gonna be a little more tricky to work on but this got smoothed out really nice matt did a beautiful job on that and the other holes I never liked on these cars were the holes from the wiper. Now the wiper is a ridiculously large contraption. Um, and for the rare time that you actually need the damn thing, it takes up a lot of space. I think visually it's ugly. Uh, I've had plenty of cars with rear wipers and I don't think I ever turned them on. So I got rid of it. And they're left behind two small holes right here. So we filled in those holes and 
then finish the coach line. Again, this part is steel, so that was relatively easy to patch. And we got that. I'd love to remove the lock hole as well, but I don't think that's possible. I don't think we have the wherewithal to do that just yet. But the smoother the better. The idea, I wanna make this look as much like one of the early prototypes as possible before they started you know, sticking things on it. And another thing to get rid of is this European rear fog light. Now this was required in Europe. Um, I don't like it. It breaks up the rear of the car. It's asymmetrical, not into it. I'm either gonna find a, a skin with no hole in it, or we're gonna take one of the other skins and cut that section out and weld, plastic weld that in there and then smooth it out. So it'll be, you won't be able to see it. That'll be a little harder to do, but that'll be a fun thing. But if imagine the whole back of the car, just one super smooth look. It'll just, it's just gonna look fantastic. We're also gonna paint it, but I'm not gonna tell you how we're gonna do it because that's gonna be a surprise. We're gonna do something for this upcoming Ren Sport in September. We're gonna do something to the car that's gonna be visually exciting. The interior is still gonna be ratty and old, but I think the exterior, we're gonna do something fun. Now, let's see if we can start it. Um, we've got the battery hooked up. We get the battery hooked up, right? Hope so. I think so, all right. Well, I hope so too. Otherwise, this is gonna be a very short video. So. We're gonna to try to start it. We do, we've checked all the oil, there's all, everything. Make sure before you try to start a car, just don't start it. You know, make sure the oil's full, make sure the power steering's full, make sure the coolant is full, make sure all the fluids are there. Make sure you don't have any open electrical wires going on strange places. Um, you wanna make sure you've meticulously gone through the car before starting it. And this car, again, ran before. I know it ran, but it has the CIS fuel injection, the mechanical fuel injection, which can be kind of temperamental. Um, it also has two fuel pumps to get all that pressurized along with a weird little accumulator. So we, uh, I think we just turn the key and see what happens and uh, see if anything blows out the exhaust pipe. One interesting thing about the 928, most 911s have the key on the left hand side and you'll see that the key on the 928 is on the right hand side, which if you're used to running a Porsche, so it's odd. You ready? Yep. All right, there we go. We got lights, we got power. turn it off because you won't be able to hear me um, and I don't want to gas this out in here but that's really kind of awesome right Matt that's right? very exciting that's very exciting right, like so I, I'm not surprised it started uh, because we went through every single system made sure everything worked independently so that's that started relatively well it's got a bit of a wah, 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 wah sound to it but I guess that's the three inch exhaust that's on it remember it's a, it's an aftermarket exhaust we took off the devic car is going to give you the bigger the exhaust the kind of more bass it's going to have so it should be interesting to hear when it revs what that sounds like um doesn't smell too bad like usually it's super rich and there's a lot of you know you can, you can smell the fuel but it's not too bad but it started so that's exciting that's the, that moment when all of us have you know we all have classic cars sitting in our driveway under a cover and it's just a lump out there and it's not really a car it's a project the moment it starts like this is the moment it turns back into a car so the 928 officially is now a car again now i never drove this when i bought it we literally drove it in the house moved it a few times but never had it out on the road so that's the next step is to go through everything once again make sure everything's tight I am going to be running on old tires, so we're not going to do anything silly. Uh, and just take it out and actually shift through the gears. Now, we replaced the uh, whole rear end, so that the rear end is the transaxle that now has a limited slip rear end, but it's also a different transmission than it originally came with. So we'll see how that transmission is, um, and we'll see how the engine runs. So that's, I'm, 
I'm, I'm kind of stoked. <laughs> I mean, this has been a, a project on the shelf for years, and now it's going to be working, and now my dream car has come to life. So that's awesome. I hope, I hope some of you out there appreciate that energy because, you know, I think all of us, all of us car guys have been through that. You know, either we watch the car die and it sits and we just get rid of it and we never get that moment or we get that moment. I'm having that moment now and I'm glad I'm sharing it with you. So that's where we're at with the 928. Oh, I did want to point out, Matt wanted to make sure, Matt did a bunch of wiring. Um, this car had, <laughs> I don't know, how many feet of wire did you pull out, Matt? Probably 60 feet. 60 feet. 60 feet of wire that didn't come on the car when it was new. I want to make sure all the wiring was clean before we tried to start it. We did find an alarm system that was in there. We did find an engine kill switch that killed the fuel pump. If we hadn't found all that crap, there would be no way we would have been able to start it. But we pulled out the, so much wire. Everybody has had solutions to their fixes over the decades this car's been in other people's hands. My Jensen Interceptor, I had a 71 Jensen Interceptor, which I loved. I, that is the record amount of wire I pulled out of it was 135 feet. And I measured it because I couldn't believe how much wire I pulled out of that car. So if you get an old car, expect to find the wiring. When you see cars burned up on the side of the road, that is usually the wiring that somebody else put in. Rarely is that the factory wiring loom. So always take care of your wiring. That is always a source of safety. But yeah, so we took out all that stuff, got it working, and now it's gonna drive. So uh, I think that's it for in the garage. Now I wanna show you outside the garage and give you a quick update on the ambulance. So if you watched the last ambulance video, you'll notice something different about the back end of the truck, and that is it has a bumper. Isn't that exciting? It really finishes the look of the truck. Now we had issues with it last time where we were tightening it down and there was a misshapen part inside and it was dented the bumper something fierce and I didn't like it. So I called LMC Truck where I got the bumper from and I sent them pictures and I told them what had happened and to their credit, they were like, mea culpa, our bad, we're sending you a new bumper and a new kit free of charge. And it's so exciting when a company actually stands behind their product and doesn't argue with you and doesn't like hang up on you and all the other things that ever, all of us run into over the days. They did a marvelous job of customer service. They got me a new bumper, we put it on, and it looks marvelous. I'm just really excited about that. The only thing we gotta do now to the rear end is to put a hitch on. Now I'm not sure yet whether I'm gonna do a hidden hitch behind the license plate, which will look slick, or just a traditional hitch hanging below. There's no hitch for a Suburban or a carryall that just bolts on. They're slightly different. There's tons of them for C10s. So that's a, but a little bit different between the, the trucks is that frame at the back. So we might have to make a hitch, which will be exciting. And I think a good subject for a video is show you how to make a hitch for your truck. But we'll get to that soon enough. And then we can start towing with it, which is the ultimate goal is to tow with the ambulance and show up with this as the tow vehicle. It's gonna be exciting. Now, the other exciting thing that's going on is that the truck is going to be in a movie. Now, movies are shut down right now, but there is my friend's doing a non-union film in San Francisco. He needs an ambulance for the final scene. And I said, you can use mine. The whole film takes place in the 70s, so it fits in perfectly. Now, the tr ambulance was looking a little rough. If you remember, there was kind of a rust <laughs> patina going on up here. So Matt had this all sanded down. We just shot it with rust-oleum because eventually we're going to repaint the whole truck so it's not no point in doing a professional paint job up here this is just a rust-oleum job looks fine it'll look great on camera most camera cars look horrible up close they look great on film so this will look fantastic it really pulls the front end together it'll look like a great period truck in his movie and the other thing we got fixed which it's, it's i guess the more exciting part is we got the lights working, right? And wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> I just scared the crap out of all my neighbors. But it's, now it's got functioning lights and a functioning siren. I, you know, the, 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 the eight year old in me is just thrilled, right? I can go around town <laughs> being Mr. Ambulance Driver now. So that's it. 
That's the update on the garage. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, help me build the channel. We're doing great. The channel's growing and I'm really excited about bringing you new things. We'll be doing a video on my next Cannonball Adventure and my history is coming up soon. And uh, we'll have more garage updates as we go. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.